some show today because this isn't somebody with credits of Emmys and Oscars and the Hollywood thing. We actually have a pastor from Thousand Oaks, former mayor of Thousand Oaks, California, as a matter of fact, who is one of the most uh, – wait to hear the stories. It's coming right up. Rob was just saying, just to open up with this, usually you know, radio shows, you go, another special guest. I'm just yeah. going to go right into – you said how the sausage was made. We're showing – the Instagram Live people, exactly. how the sausage is made. We had something in Philadelphia called Scrapple. Have you ever heard of Scrapple? I have, I have. You have? Yeah, it's it's all the stuff on the cutting room floor. <laughs> What's after sausage? <laughs> they sweep up the floor. It's what, floor. They, it's what they put in haggis. <laughs> and they, they make a, yes, they make a mold out of it in Philadelphia. Just put ketchup on it, put hair on your chest. It was food that was vented on a dare. It's called Scrapple. <laughs> Scrapple. It's one, one vowel away from Scrap Pile. There you go. I never figured it out until I had already consumed like massive amounts. I went, wait a minute, scrap pile. It makes you angry. That's why all the Eagles fans eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why we're angry? Because we're, we're eating it. That's why the Scots are angry, too. That's right. No, that a lot. Aren't you part Scots? Aren't you? I don't yeah, want to yeah. try it in front of you. <laughs> are, you are you Scottish? Yeah. My McCr- mother wants to know because my mother's really into Ireland, and she's going to come meet you in a couple weeks. Yeah, so uh, Northern Ireland, so we immigrated, and Scotch-Irish. My father's, or my mother's maiden name was McKee. My dad's McCoy. So oh, okay. We're very Scottish. No, that a lot. <sighs> my mom is so upset that I don't become more Irish. But she, you know, she, she loves when I hang out. With, oh, now you're the Lucky Charms guy. That's the only way I can. She's do a good woman. That's now. the only way I can do an impression of an Irish person. <laughs> ah, someone's <laughs> after me, Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. That's Southern Ireland. That, uh, oh, is that right? It is. It is. They I go up not, and down. I didn't know that. They it go is, up and down. True, true. They got a lilt in their voice. They do a wee bit. I'm from County Cork. How about you? Yeah, I don't know. Ah, I'm from Thousand Oaks. From Thousand Oaks. He's the mayor, <laughs> former mayor we have here Mayor, now. Mc, mayor McCheese. Mayor McCheese. <laughs> mayor Mar McCoy is here with us, folks. He's a pastor he is but he doesn't wear the frock yeah, watch yourself my, my mom <laughs> the, yo, frock. my mom is going to come out here in a few weeks and i want her to meet you i look forward to it because my mom is very very much into me being irish and christian and i moved to hollywood where it goes opposite <laughs> yeah, that's true you go opposite field on that and so my mom she's so happy i actually go to your church now it's an odd story how i ended up going there I ended up, well, I'll start right with that. I spoke there uh, with my Laughter Heals program. That's right. For a group of men led by Frank Sontag, and he had me be a guest speaker. Worst introduction of my entire life. Do you remember what it was? It was a Saturday. It, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> he says, all Christian men, and I'm not, you know, uh, really, you know, that's, I'm, I'm being he was, God. He, he was apologizing. He for apologized him. for me. That's my intro. I usually get Netflix, Showtime. Well, he hasn't been saved. Here he is, Craig Shoemaker. That's so great because everyone comes up and tries to <laughs> convert you. <laughs> exactly. I had a whole congregation trying to convert me because I haven't been saved yet. They weren't even listening to the first five minutes. No. That was the worst introduction I've ever had in my life. I got out of it, though, and it ended up be, I ended up with a great friend out of it. Yeah. That, Corey, that, Corey Travelina. Not only you, but Corey Travelina. Exactly. Is a really good friend of mine whose dad I admired was my inspiration, and here I met him at your church. That's great. And I ended up going to the church, but then... We met afterwards, and I had heard about you. I just want to tell people how I heard about you. You had the courage to stand up to government and obviously a lot of opposition during the pandemic. And I so admired you from afar. I heard about you from an atheist. Did I ever tell you that? No. My atheist friend went to your church. Love it. He's full atheist, too. My friend Dave. He goes, yeah, you got to hear this guy. And he had Robert Kennedy there. You had Robert Kennedy speaking. Yeah, there. Bobby Kennedy was there. Bobby, Bobby Kennedy, Kennedy Jr. Yeah. yeah, Bobby Kennedy Jr. was there speaking. And and my friend told me about you. So I said, oh, this guy sounds really cool. And you were opposed to the mandates and and everything else. Yeah. So I kind of like knew about you. So you said hi. I'm Rob. I, I didn't realize it was even your church when I spoke there. And and then you turned to me and you go, No, I wanted to meet you. Amen. That was so strange. By to the me. way, when I say amen, it means true. Okay. That's all right. I'm just used to it. Uh, no, listen, I, I I grew up like that. I grew up black. <laughs> we say we say Amen, Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but uh, so I met you that day, and then you spoke. <clears throat> I did. And first, you had me come backstage. I was going through a really tough season, you know. And everyone, it was so beautiful. You all held me in prayer, strangers, a lot of men. Yeah, it's actually all men. Yeah, and a guy like this who has been down the path of toxic femininity 
becoming a woman, not becoming, <laughs> I'm not transitioning. I'm, I, I'm, no, I'm confession, no confessions here. But I went down this path of believing that if I only had this deeper empathy for women, for the plight of women, if so I believe there was a plight. You grew up with all women. Yeah. Yeah. And with a big influence, although my mom is very conservative and much more pro-men. That's what's odd about it. But I ended up with this other. My sister is the opposite, though. I would say, hey, I'm dating this girl. She goes, oh, a girl? Is she uh, under 18? She would say that. Yeah. Oh, then she's a woman. Mm. So I was trained and indoctrinated in this speak of pro-feminine and pro- what, but it was all developing it's in development it's <laughs> while you're talking i'm going through some of your comedy routines <laughs> <laughs> just that's why i'm smiling how you learned how to shave and <laughs> epa lady yeah. took the hair out by the root with a spring <laughs> and a lady bick <laughs> and our shower curtain was nylons <laughs> and uh yeah it was just a whole i had a feminine perspective with this masculine instinct that was put away and you had a crappy dad yeah not the best no not the best. But did you ever think that he's not because of the lessons that I learned how to be a good dad? Yeah, he was an he anvil. He certainly was an anvil. I mean, an he, anvil. And you, you honor your mother and father, and you just your dad taught you what not to do. You yeah, know, True. And and you are who you are because he did what he did. You could have been a victim, but you were more than a victim. Oh. You were a conqueror. You, yeah. you overcame it, and you turned it into funny. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what that's it was an alchemy. And God used you to save my life. Yeah, well, that's, we'll get to that. That's that's just the craziest story. That's probably the craziest story of my life. Really? Yeah, yes. Because I've, I've walked with you and heard stories that just blow me I away. know, I know. I got some stories, yeah. And listen, I'm happy to be here where I am and alive. Yeah. I'm happy to be alive. I didn't think I'd be alive, and I tried not to be alive because I just didn't have an understanding of life. It was you know, the, the teachers weren't really there. Yeah. The teachers were they from— didn't, They didn't know what to do with you. No, no. Seriously, you were like you were you were 100 caffeine. <laughs> that was in, you didn't have blood. You just had caffeine. Yeah, you it's were funny. you were ADD before they even knew what it was. I, it was called hyperactive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was so hyper. I used to sleepwalk and wet my sister's bed. That's, <laughs> that's, you know, I was a hyper kid. Yes. Yeah. But a lot of the hyperactivity has to do with like not wanting to be in this body because yeah. the body was rejected. It was rejected. But you don't be you. That's a brilliant insight. I just came up with it. Is it really? Yeah, seriously. I, I've <laughs> never heard someone... What did I just say? <laughs> oh, you replay it later. I, we'll have to replay it later. Yeah. Because, uh, but That's so good, I'm going to have to get my own recording of it. Sometimes I say, say to myself, hey, mark that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, a, that's Hollywood. Mark that. That's the best take. That was deep. I don't even know what I said, but what I am saying is... You said you were uncomfortable in your body. That's why you're so fidgety. Yeah, well, I didn't want to be in this body, yeah. and no one else wanted this body around them either. It was like you're reject- tired of the ridicule. It was, it was rejected and yeah. ridiculed and shamed yeah. and, and st- beaten up and stuff like that. So how do you respond to that? No, yeah. I responded by making people laugh. It all turned around once I saw that. I was a magical moment, fourth grade. Never forget. I told a true story, and wow, this one's looking at me. This one's nice to me. They're laughing at me. It was the that's a magical thing. And I'm wondering, you're a pastor. How much do you associate laughter and that flow of energy with God? Uh, I think it's a gift from God. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you talk about the fourth grade. For me, it happened in second grade. My my dad was a Navy captain, and so every two years we get a new duty station. And I remember coming in the second grade into Coronado, and we come from the East Coast, and I was wearing East Coast clothes, and there was kind of the surfer era in the se- yeah. 1970, and th- they were all making fun of me. And I, I tragically, I... And, and I wasn't raised in a Christian home, but but tragically, I, I saw this kid with you know bright red hair and co- Coke bottle thick glasses and food on his shirt, and they were making fun of me. So I just targeted him and started making fun of him. Everybody started laughing uh-huh. at him and took the issue off of me. Mm. And you know later in life, that that kid would ultimately take his life. And you talk about murdering with words, as it says in Matthew, that you know you you, you say to someone you fool. It's like murdering, you know, because you, you don't need a gun to kill a kid. You can just say you're ugly and stupid and your mother and I wish you were never born. That You grew up with that. You yeah. you grew up with that pain. And yeah. some don't overcome it. And I, I I was so overwhelmed by that, you know. And, and when I became a Christian, I went looking for him. Mm. And when I heard what had happened, and I wasn't the only kid that did that, but I, I took responsibility for that. I mean, and I, I've really wanted to watch my words since then. You know, humor at someone else's expense um, – is is not funny. I, I, I agree. I te- when I teach, you know, I teach <coughs> laughter. I teach comedy. 
Um, that's why I say, say, talk about your own experience. And by the way, that is your experience. You made fun of them. My experience is I did the same thing. I can still name the two people that same thing. Yeah. And um, very unfortunate for me to do that. You're a bully. I was yeah. a bully because yeah. I didn't want to be bullied. So you take it over here to someone who's less than you. They're getting, you know, they're getting bullied more than you are because they have even more special needs. And uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate. But I learned how to make it, turn it on me and have fun making fun of me. You do the same thing. Yeah. Self-deprecating humor is very funny, and it also humbles your, you. Yes, because y it, it's not funny unless it's true. Hundred percent. Yeah, I talk about that when I speak about. If you speak of the truth, you're releasing secrets, and you're releasing this these things that tie us up, that make us into misery, that turn us into resentment yeah. and, and anger and rage that gets misplaced onto someone else, as opposed to this other alchemy that takes place with laughter, truly connected. I mean, I believe it's really a connection with God. I mean, it's the, I mean, there's no filter. Yeah. When you're laughing, there's no filter. Well, that's what knitted me to you before I'd ever met you in person. Was, Which is weird, yeah. I was listening to your Barney Fife impersonation <laughs> and, okay, girls, let's, you know, and you were, and, 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 and I. You remember that from 1994. Yeah, but I'm, I'm cracking up at this stuff because, you know, you, in your transparency, yeah. you, I, people, people see, see that and they can see themselves in that. And if they can laugh with you, they it they can accept what they're dealing with, and yeah. that was that was instrumental for me at a very critical moment. And I that just yeah. yeah. I don't know who's going to tell the story. You or me? <laughs> We're sitting on that story. I took it to the point where I'm back in your office and they're praying for me. Yeah. And I did not know I knew who you were because of the reputation. And then you took the stage and you told a story. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know whether in this podcast, I thought about it ahead of time, who tells the story, you or me? Because I've been, I've been with this for two years now. It's, it's one of the most profound moments of my life. And it actually led me to your church as well because of that connection, a connection that took place 28 years ago without ever meeting. Well, we, we can do it two ways. One is I can start and then you jump in where it started ministering to you. Okay. I don't know. All right. So, yeah, tell the story. So now you take the stage in front of the men that I bombed in front of. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't bomb. I, I know I did not. I'm bomb. being self-deprecating. It's all right. Come on, let me have it. Let me have yeah, the self-deprecating. Right. It was pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> you made fun of me. I'm going to go kill myself. I'm the only one allowed to make fun of me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, um, and just a little backstory on me is I'm, I've been into God for a very long time, but I've had a problem with religion. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you know the reasons why. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard them a million times. Sure. And this is why there's the resistance to religion. Is what Christians have killed in the, no other, you know, in the name of Christianity and the wars that have taken place. Personally, for me, even the Irish, my mom always says, the Irish, Irish, Irish. She loves the Irish. But say, Look, they've been at war with the Catholics and the Protestants. A religion and religion go at war for all those years. I think that's why God invented whiskey to stop the Irish from <laughs> ruling the world. <laughs> And sense of humor, by the way. Irish have a great sense of humor. Oh, they do. Yeah. yeah. Really great sense of humor. And my mom emphasizes that. And my mom is also really funny. Like, oh. really, like, full on make me laugh till I cry. I got, I got my humor from my dad. You got your yeah? humor from your mom. That's kind of cool. Wow. And what about your mom? Not funny? She was she was funny, but what, what she provided was the laugh track for my dad. I mean, she had a laugh that was contagious. You, you know how you can make an evening... When you're performing, just with the right person laughing, they can get the whole audience going. That was my mom. She laughed so hard, you know, the tears would run down her legs. I mean, she was just hilarious in her laughter. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and my dad, was, he knew how to just play every, <laughs> every <laughs> note for her. He played the room. Yeah, he did. There's an instinct that takes place when you're doing good comedy where you do feel the energy of people. And I believe that's a God thing, too. It's like yeah. it's this pure God truth Nothing else in the room. And that moment where you're having that connection, it's a divine connection. And I, a lot of comedians won't even acknowledge that. They think it's just, you know, they're so sarcastic and cynical. They cut off. But it, it's, it, it's truly divine and ethereal to have that happen with people. It, it is. In a, in a fallen world where we're all struggling, to, to find humor in it, that's how you deal with the pain. That's what my family did. Yeah. Uh, I, one of my favorite, my, my older brother is nine years older than me. And my mom is dying of a botched lung cancer surgery. And she's moments from death. 
That's and hilarious. It's hilarious. Well, it, it, it's tragic, <laughs> but we're all we're my my two sisters, my brother, myself were, you know, waiting for my mom to pass. You know, she's at the gurgle point, you know, and I've been by the bedside of hundreds of people who pass as a minister. Yeah. And my youngest sister, I'll just exclude names, but my youngest sister, uh, she's still older, older than me. I'm the youngest of four, but she's right next to me. She had never seen anyone die before. And every time my mom would make some sort of a movement, she'd go, she's in pain. I'm going to go get the nurse for more morphine. And just hitting that button, like, endlessly. <laughs> and, and, you know, morphine's going to kill her, ultimately. And, my, <laughs> and there's silence in the room, and my brother goes, maybe <laughs> our sister should try a pillow. <laughs> 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 we were laughing. Everybody at, broke up, right? Yeah, and my mom, she's you know, she's between heaven and earth, and, yeah. and I guarantee you, she's she's laughing the hardest. Yeah, it was just, and that's how you deal with pain. Right. And in a fallen world, it's a gift from God that we can all relate. That look, we've screwed up. We can laugh at ourselves a little bit on this road to redemption. It's yeah. all right. Do you think? Do you think the word funeral, the word fun, is in there for a reason? <laughs> you think I think so. Think it might have been called a funeral at one time until somebody <laughs> got real serious. I wonder if that's the case, because I've had a good time at funerals. That reminds me of a Scottish joke. What's that? There are two Scotsmen. They were the best of friends. And he says to his friend, he says, I've got bad news for you. And he says, what's that? He says, I'm dying. He says, that breaks my heart. He says, it breaks mine as well. He says, I have a request for you before I die. He says, anything for you. You're my best friend. He says, you know that bottle of scotch my, my granddad gave me? We haven't opened. He goes, I do. He says, when I die and I'm laying in my casket, Will you pour it over me body, oh, so slowly? He says, I will. He says, may I ask you a favor before you die? He says, yes, you're my best friend. He says, do you mind if I pass it through my kidneys first? <laughs> 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 that's the fun in funeral. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I want to say one thing, and then we're going to get into your story. I'm sorry I'm telling the, jokes. The, you're way better at it. No, no, you're brilliant at jokes. You have no idea. Like, uh, I coach... I coach humor. Well, I coach people how to be. You're my hero. So. How to be funnier. You're already like upper level. I go to your services. I see it, and then you get self-deprecating. You think, oh no, I'm not as good as a comedian. No, you are. You are. Just just live it. Just right. live it and go with own the flow. It. Okay. Own it exactly. Well, as if that wasn't enough, we have a lot more, because Rob and I have a connection that is. Uh, it was not written by us. No, there's no logical mind that could come up with this connection, and uh, I can't wait for. More to be exposed. That didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it did. Okay. Let's go with it.